right, roll call, Mr. Colley. Yes, sir. Seat A, Chucky Sheremy. Here. Seat B, Tom Pete. Here. Seat C, Jimmy Lafon. Here. Seat D, Rodney Disclair. Absent. Absent. Seat E, Ted Savoy. Here. Seat F, Larry Griffin. Here. Seat G, John Bellison. Here. Seat H, Mike Kelly. Here. Seat I, Chris <coughs> Kelly. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Next, we have ceremony swearing in seat B, Mr. Tom Pete. Mr. Petrie, will you stand up and get sworn in, please? Uh, that's why she's here. Hope, oh, you want to go stand by? Yeah, you can go stand by. Yeah, I might take it. It's a little different this time. So, Mr. President, Mr. Petrie, I think, set a new record. Yeah. He's been sworn in three times in 45 days. <laughs> yes. So, you are the new record holder, Mr. Petrie? Thank you. And while, while we're doing this, congratulations um, from, from myself and the staff of the Port Commission. I want to explain to, to the people in the audience and people watching on, on uh, television here on what, what's, what happened. Because recently you were, you were sworn in as an interim member when um, someone had resigned, right? So where we are today is that we, we do have a special election to fill those two seats. Well, um, when uh, the, the um, sign up for running for that office came, um, no one ran against Mr. Pete. So he is officially a member of the Great Lafourche Port Commission, is now an elected member of the Great Lafourche Port Commission. We want to congratulate him on that. And, um, and thank you for, for stepping up to, to fill that seat. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Pete, we're more than welcome to have you on board with us in this commission and the community is more than happy. It's an honor to, me, to serve with you all. Right. Next, we have approved minutes for January 11, 2023 meeting. I need a motion. Move. Moved by John Mellison, seconded by Mr. Tom Pete. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It passed. Minutes approved. Okay, next we have director's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first is our northern expansion projects. Northern expansion, slip seat, and flotation canal bulkhead. PCO Land Associates. Uh, so APC Construction is a contractor. He's nearing completion. He's uh, putting timber cap on top of the bulkhead and then bringing in aggregate to uh, finish out the job. He should be finished in the next couple of weeks and we'll ask for substantial completion then. Okay. Any questions for Joe? All right, Northern Expansion, Slip Sea, and Flotation Canal, Sweep Dredging. So uh, we bid this project out and, uh, in November and um, Coastal Dredging Company was a little bitter. This is for the, the <coughs> dredging and the material and the exterior of the bulkhead. Uh, we did have a pre-construction meeting with him last week, and we're giving him a notice to proceed uh, for March the 7th. And just tell the, the board and the public where um, we're going to be placing that material. So most of that material is going to go um, along the outside edge of Slip D uh, in, um, for building property for development. Any questions? Thank you, Joe. Thank you. <clears throat> Northern Expansion Slip D Bulkhead, GIS Engineering. Okay, we have completed our design of this. Uh, DOTD has reviewed our plans and approved them pending some minor changes. We have made those changes and we are ready to start advertising, so we'll be coordinating with the staff on a date to receive bids. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, John. 
Right, airport projects. David Broom. Under airport operations for last month were 1,553 operations. Personnel, passengers, we had 8,161. And we had 16,686 vehicles uh, visit the airport. Any questions on it? Okay. The airport connector road and bridge. PCO Line Associates. <coughs> Yes, uh, Sea Level Construction is a contractor. Um, they've been working on uh, pouring concrete for the noise barrier between the roadway and the residents and also on uh, pouring concrete on the main columns uh, within Bayou Lafourche. They did run into some problems on the first two columns they poured. They didn't have sufficient rebar inside, so they're dismantling those and they'll pour those back uh, fairly soon here. Any questions? Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Airport terminal surcharge project, GIS engineering. Okay, we are in the process of designing a new terminal building for y'all at the airport. As part of that process, we are, uh, went out for bids to bring in some material to surcharge the project. You know, every time you put in dirt, it settles, so get trying to get that settlement out of the way before the construction of the actual building is. Onshore Materials is the contractor for that project. We issued a notice to proceed on January 25th. They moved the fence out the way and doing preliminary surveys this week. Okay. Any questions? All right, the PAPI LED upgrade. Okay, the PAPI lights at the airport. We've got a request for proposal uh, <coughs> quotations out right now. They're due uh, next week, the 14th. Okay. All right. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. The approach obstruction removal, David. All right, approach obstruction removal, ICE is the engineer and LMB contractors is a contract on the project. The work is complete. So further on on the agenda, there's a change auto item to address. Uh, we had an adjustment of, uh, there was a mistake on the plans of 0.2 acres. So instead of six, it's gonna read 6.2 acres. We did not remove any isolated trees. There was an item on that, so that's gonna be a zero and permanent seating, since he mulched the trees, we didn't put the seating in, we removed it. So it's gonna be a, a, a change order to decrease the price by $7,200 okay. on that change order. Any questions? <coughs> All right, moving on to other projects. The Fouchon Pavilion, PCO and Associates. Uh, yeah, onshore construction is a contractor. Um, all of the building erection is done. Uh, most of the concrete pouring is done. The drainage is in. Uh, currently, he's working on electrical items and uh, putting in a sewer plant. Um, sewer plant will actually arrived today to be installed. Um, so in the next couple of weeks before the next meeting, we should be finished or close to being finished. So I'd expect sometime either early or mid-March to be complete with this project. Looks good, Looks Joe. Good. Looks Thank you. Very pretty. Long time coming. Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> Long time, All right. yeah. All right, flotation canal and front commercial marina dredge. So this is a big dredging project that has been on the books for a while. We're, we're doing dredging in front of the mooring dolphins. We're doing dredging in flotation canal from slip C to the end of slip D uh, that was kind of silted up during Hurricane Ida. And we're also doing uh, dredging in the front marina, uh, which is silted up before Ida, and it's subsequently silted up more af after Ida. So we're currently advertising for bids. We're going to receive bids on February 28th at 2 p.m. Okay. And questions? the spoil for this is going to go into a, a mitigation area on the north side of Flotation Canal, create some marsh. And then when that's exhausted, we'll, um, we'll put the remaining material around slip D for uh, development. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Joe. All right, the Port Security Elwin System Project. Uh, John Crochet. The amendment letter for the location change has been submitted. Motorola completed a site survey to get us pricing on some work that needs to be done to the communications building. Any further questions? Thank you, John. Okay. All right, the Leeville LA-1 construction canal dredging and mitigation, Angelette Design. 
The plans and specs for this project are complete. Um, they're currently being reviewed by the port and DOTD, and we'll be advertising once we receive back comments from the state. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Neil. Thank you. Okay, our Hurricane Ida repair projects, the administration building. Davey? The administration building, PCOLA construction, is the contractor on it. Uh, he is working on the interior, doing some uh, paint finishes, finishing up the sheetrock. We do have electrical and air conditioning ongoing, and next week they'll be back to put the final layer on the roof system. So that job is progressing well. All right. And we should be in there, as Mr. Larry requested, every month at our board meeting. We should be in there sometime in May. We're hoping, right. keeping our fingers crossed. All right. All right, the public boat launch bathhouse, PCOL and Associates. So Grand Isle Shipyard is the contractor. This project is complete. Uh, we replaced all the handicap access ramps and all of the, the lights that were damaged during Hurricane Ida. Um, we, we, uh, we, we have uh, completed the lean period. And we, we don't have a clear lien certificate yet. Uh, we requested it from the clerk's office. And I would suggest that you, um, you can issue the payment, just hold the payment until we receive the clear lien certificate. Right, so further still, on. Still no elevator. No. No elevator. So, so further on the agenda, we do have um, to approve the clear lien certificate. We can still do that even though we don't hold, hold a certificate pending the receipt of that certificate. The project's done. Everything is, is, has been satisfactory. So we're ready to move forward. So as soon as we get that, then we'll release the payment so we can approve it later. <coughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. And then Nerby Collins Marina Bucket Dredge. Um, so we received bids, and uh, Plazon's drag line is the contractor. Uh, we gave him a notice to proceed on January 30th. He is in there dredging right now. The idea is to dredge all the material out of the center, move it to the side, and then cast it onto land where he'll truck it to the location where we want him to deposit it. And we're going to use this as uh, fill material for the parking lot, um, overflow parking lot for the pavilion area. That's the plan. Mr. Pisciola, pictures work a thousand words. I was trying to understand on Monday night's committee meeting what you were talking about, but that is, uh, I understand. Thank you. Any further questions? All right, demolition of the PHI office building. So we received bids last week, and Lowland Construction was the low bidder in the amount of $36,563, and we recommend that you approve that bid later on on the agenda. Yep. And, and for further clarity, we call it internally the PHI office building because it used to be the PHI office building. It's actually the Port Commission building that they got damaged for the storm now. So we're going to remove it and then look to replace it or have a, a tenant replace it in the future. Okay. Thank you. All right. The Operations Center, EOC, and Operations Maintenance Warehouse, Riddermeyer Architects. Uh, Scott. Thank you guys for having me here, Scott Ritter, Ritter Mayor Architects. Uh, okay, so um, Site 18B, the Johnny Malonso Senior Operations Center was kind of the first project on the docket. Interior work of this building is now complete. The new barrel roof is 95% complete and a roofing contractor will be moving to Site 18A upon final completion. The stucco subcontractor has begun staging and plans to have stucco patchwork completed in the next couple of weeks. Um, 18A, Project 18A is the Wilbert Collins Senior Operations Center. As mentioned above, the roof replacement work will start very soon on this building. Interior work will begin on this project as soon as the crews from 18B can shift their focus from the interior of the previous building. Okay. Uh, finally, Site 19, so there's three projects in total, is the Fushan Operations Warehouse. The metal building colors have been released to contractor this week. We've cleared all of our permitting and um, issues for replacement of that building, so that should get rolling here pretty soon. Uh, two change orders for you guys to consider later at the meeting. Change order one was the proposed roof, total roof replacement at 18A, so that's at the Wilbert Collins building. Um, the total ad for that project for that change order is 172,640 and 88 cents. Change order two is a credit uh, at the operations warehouse, so the small building. Uh, the permit required us to delete some 
use some previously previous uses that now that we're on the ground, they don't want it to flood again. So we had to take the stuff out of the job. We got a credit for that work. Um, we did have to add some floodway dampering in the building uh, as a result of the permitting. So the, the net change order is a credit of $2,996. Any questions? Any questions for Scott? Thank you. Thanks for Excellent. taking the time to come. Boat lift, roof, and wharves, GIS engineering. Okay, this is the repair of various wharves and boat lifts at three different sites for y'all. Uh, Tidewater Dock is the contractor on this project. He has been progressing very well. He will have a roughly 60-day delay because he needs to get into Derby Collins Marina, which is now being dredged by a place on his drag line, but we expect him to complete uh, on time pending that. We have three chainers that will treat. Excuse me. Three change orders. That will be in front of y'all later on y'all agenda. The first change order is to add some additional work that we are going to take advantage of the contractor while he's out there to do. Uh, some of that is FEMA work, but most a lot of that is also just additional work uh, that the Port Commission would like to get done. Change order number two is to add the days that he cannot get into Nervy Collins Marina. Uh, change order number three will be uh, basically a balancing change order. He's finished work on two different sites. So that's basically a balancing change order so we can get him paid for that work next month. Okay. Any questions? All right, the airport terminal repairs. The Freetown Builders is the contractor for that project. We issued a conditional notice to proceed on January 30th. Uh, the parish finally issued the building permit on February 2nd, so we had issued a full notice to proceed on February the 6th, which was Monday. He's got 90 days to do that, so he should be finished the first week of May. Uh, there is also a change order for that project later on the agenda. Uh, FEMA would only pay for a portion of the roof as Ida damages, but we're going to take the opportunity to go ahead and replace the whole roof. Uh, that's going to be $31,705. Okay. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, flotation canal, mooring, dolphin repairs, Angelette Design. So sea level construction is a contractor on this project. Um, all of the contracts are complete, and the notice to proceed is being issued for next Wednesday, um, February 15th. We anticipate that this construction is going to take about five months. Um, I think it's 150 days on contract. Mm -hmm. So we should be complete by mid, um, mid July. Okay. All right. Any questions for Neil? Thank you, Neil. Thank you. All right, we have an update from Restore Retreat. The director, Mr. Joe Jerome. Thank you for being here, Joe. You got the click? Before I get into the Restore Retreat, I would like to give an update on uh, Act 160 as a representative for y'all, Act 167 and 169, which everybody knows following Hurricane Ida, a lot of the, uh, the claims were 90% FEMA and 10% cost share, pay your own. Uh, representative Ziza Rang worked to put $30 million, $33 million of excess surplus money into a fund to be able to be distributed amongst uh, four parishes, Terrebonne, Lafouche, St. Charles and Jefferson, but only Lower Jefferson being Lafitte and Grand Isle. And uh, in, in uh, Lafouche, we were able to bring down about $9 million, of which the port is going to get $1 million to defray those out-of-pocket costs. Uh, the hospital will also be getting a $1 million. I believe the, the, the parish themselves and the school board are the only two that are getting the maximum of $2 million. And uh, beyond that, the town of Lockport, the town of uh, Golden Meadow, the town of Grand Isle, uh, the Fire District 3 here, the Communications District, uh, they're all getting their pretty much equal to their 10% cost share on all of that. Had a meeting with the Department of the Treasury, who has the money, the Louisiana Legislative's office that uh, is, is uh, doing all the documentation and auditing of this. And the way that it'll work is the Treasury will uh, provide the full Lafouche Parish $9 million directly to uh, Lafouche Parish government. 
and Miss uh, Renita, Renita Jackson is going to be the point contact. I have a presentation that I received yesterday that I'm going to be passing down to all the political subdivisions that will explain how to do the letter of agreement and the process to, to receive your money and the documentation required. So happy to get that out, out there and it's been, it's been since the last legislative session. And uh, the, only, the only bad thing is, is as it stands now, the money is supposed to be spent or shown obligated by June 30th of this year. So I kind of made, in, in the presentation they gave, I kind of talked to them. It's like, y'all you uh, taking, taking all afternoon to brew the, pot, the cup of coffee and then y'all telling us hurry up and drink it and get out the door so we got to close, you know. So anyway, but uh, we could, if there are problems and issues, uh, in this next legislative session, we could actually extend the time to, uh, to spend it for this particular money. But with that all said, I'm here to actually talk about uh, Restore or Retreat and where we're at today. I'm going to try to figure out how this works. I am the, the executive director since July of this year uh, for this uh, great uh, uh, nonprofit organization. I'm going to talk about history, some of the goals that I inherited. Uh, some of the forward goals and then some conclusions. So let's get started. Uh, established originally in 2000, nine, yeah, in 2000 by some uh, local stakeholders. I know it's hard to read, but uh, uh, people from the bio who saw that the need to uh, to be active on restoring our coastal environment, uh, recognizing that. Uh, that the Terrebonne Basin and the Barataria Basin on either side of Bayou Lafourche pretty much represents about 25% of all the seafood that's produced for our nation and about also a quarter of all the domestic energy that's, uh, that's uh, produced in our nation. So it's a very, very important, two very important estuarial basins are on either side of our hometown here. And, uh, and not only being the most productive, they're also the, mo the most rapidly eroding in the whole nation. Nation. So, uh, so a, a, a nonprofit organization was stood up in 2005. We became an official nonprofit in the eyes of the IRS, and uh, I got my executive committee there. It, the, I know Lulin's here today. He was the one who drafted the bylaws for Restore or Retreat and typed them all up. Uh, could see that in all the, the, the historical events. Uh, Mike Plaisance of Plaisance Dragon Lines, the president. Tim Allen of Apache is the vice president. Robert Nakan, formerly of Capital One, is the treasurer. Henri, Henri Boulay of LA1 Coalition and now MAC uh, Morganza Action Coalition is the secretary, as well as Berwick Duval and Marguerite Knight. Uh, Greater Lafourche Port Commission is one of the largest uh, member donors. We're funded by donors like Apache, the Bollingers, Conical Phillips, Submar, the rest of them there. So basically, it's it's a nonprofit that focuses on aggressively looking at what things like CPRE are doing in order to build back our marsh to protect our uh, our coast, our community, and our culture. So, moving on, uh, I had big shoes to follow because of course Simone Malaz had been at the, at the helm for a long time. She's moved on to restore Louisiana as the campaign manager, so she now coordinates uh, organizations like Restore Re Retreat, CRCL, and many other ones. And then she passed it on to Victoria, and I don't know who that tour bus uh, <laughs> announcer is there behind Victoria. Oh, it's Davey Bro. So, <laughs> talking with his hands. So anyway, uh, after Hurricane Ida, Victoria felt the need to move back to her hometown in uh, Mouton Corners, out in uh, uh, near Lafayette, and that left no one there. I was I had been a board member since I think 2013, and felt that after seeing Hurricane Ida, I felt the need that I needed to to step up and take over the role in the meantime. So that's that's how I got to where I am. Uh, one of the things that I inherited was we get, we get a grant from the National Wildlife Federation and the, because of COVID and because of Hurricane Ida, some of the monies that, that they were given and granted and required to spend in a particular year were not spent. And I had just come back from a tour of uh, West Grand Terre right on the other side of Grand Isle 
and they had just redone the dunes. Hurricane Ida had swiped the dunes across the whole island, and then they were redoing the dunes, getting ready to complete that. And there were all these different little uh, uh, fish cuts. This was taken at extremely low tide, but uh, but there's a whole bunch of little areas on the on the north side, on the bay side of Grand Terre, where uh, where water comes in and out and. One of the site tours had uh, redfish swimming in and out of those cuts, and the, uh, the, the lead engineer at CPRA said, if there's no vegetation that gets planted here, all of this will change and there won't be these cuts anymore. So I, I decided to use the remaining monies of the National Wildlife Federation to, uh, to, to buy uh, 8,000 smooth cord plugs, get about 30 volunteers, and go out there on, uh, in November on a day that a cold front was, uh, was coming. <laughs> Not a good day, but uh, I couldn't plan that. But uh, we planted 8,000 smooth cord grass uh, plugs and 500 mango, mangrove plants. I recently went back and uh, toured the site, flew a drone over it first to look at it, and I saw a lot of brown plants over. So whenever we planted them, they're, they're green, they're, they're two feet long, they stick in the ground, and what happens is the, the, the two foot long green part eventually dies, but on every one of the plugs that we had put, they have a little sprout of 20 or 30 new grasses coming out. So we're, it looks pretty good that uh, that area will be, uh, will be uh, vegetated and hold those uh, topographical features for fish cuts. A second uh, little pot of money was involves the, the port here, and that's the Environmental Defense Fund gave us money to bring U.S. congressional uh, uh, members or staffers down for a field trip to the area to look at the, the port, energy production, <coughs> offshore energy production, and uh, the coastal restoration efforts. So we made a conscientious effort to wait until the 118th Congress was established, see who would be on the key committees. I've uh, had calls with uh, one of the lobbyists up there, Mike Henry, and he's putting together a list of key people or staffers that at the spring break we could invite down to, uh, to bring to give one of these tours. Uh, it's happened, been doing them for years and years in the past. Here's a picture of one of them from the past. Don't know who the legislator is, but Simone's in there with Gary Graves and, and people from the Army Corps. Uh, the last bit of, of, uh, of inherited money that I needed to spend was some le leftover money from Chevron uh, that paid to do these goggles, these uh, virtual reality goggles, and they did a video about jobs in, uh, in the area, excavation and, and uh, land moving jobs to build up our levees and our coast and restoration efforts. And with the remaining money, the plan is to, uh, I've already spoke with Wendell Curo, and in his now semi-retired spare time, he's going to work with me to utilize the existing footage and uh, the, the goggles to do kind of a, a before and after Ida type of, uh, type of program. So, currently in, uh, working on that. The standing goals going forward, of course, for a, an organization like Restore or Retreat is to support the master plan, which is now out, CPR's master plan. Here's a, a picture of all the Terrebonne-based projects and the Barataria-based projects, the ones that are primarily of interest to us. Uh, we had a, a community uh, roundtable meetings I think that's John that's uh, there with me. Uh, at the LaRue Civic Center back in, uh, in November, and just recently at the Huma uh, Municipal Auditorium, we had a, uh, a public comment period. So supporting the master plan and moving all the projects that build, you know, uh, uh, barrier island restoration, land bridges, shoreline stabilization, ridge creation, marsh creation, uh, hydraulic dredging, all of those particular projects, we got to support. Um, another, another thing Restore Retreat tries to do is engage with any of y'all, any of y'all in the community who have interest in, in going on any of these projects. The ones I listed there are the ones just since I've been in Restore Retreat that I've done myself. And that's uh, Davis Pond Diversion, Spanish Pass on the other side of Buras. 
uh, I'm sorry, on, on outside of Venice, Neptune Pass on the other side of Buras, the West Grand Terre project, uh, Caminata Headlands, Motorport uh, Diversion on the other side of the river, and as well as some flyovers. This is uh, got uh, Buddy Mincy, Representative Buddy Mincy's in there uh, from, the, from the House of Representatives with me. Got him and a, and a few other people to come out to Motorport and do that tour, and of course the flyover. Basically, we left out of Bell Chase and flew all the way down the river and back up through Lafitte to see all the projects that are, that are ongoing. And lastly, uh, any ad hoc projects. For instance, the, uh, the Kaiwet family approached me in, in fall of last year talking about a, the piece of property at the end of the Fouchon Road where the bridge will be built that they're interested in providing a donation. And uh, at first, we engaged Wildlife and Fisheries, who was interested, kind of like a lukewarm interest in taking over that piece of property. Uh, they basically said, we'll put a gate, we'll open it up in the morning, close it at night, kind of do like an Elmer's Island type of thing. And uh, it seemed that the, the Kaiwet family was not interested in, in a passive uh, type of uh, facility. So we, we pivoted and we talked to, under Billy Nungas of the State Parks Division, and uh, they basically latched on and, and really appreciate the chance to come up with some what they call concept plans. So you could see there that's uh, the, the, the beach on, at the bottom on the, uh, on the left graphic, and the bridge would be at the top. So it would be everything south of the boat launch all the way out to the beach and they would have campers and pull through RV campers, I think 16, 12 uh, uh, hurricane fortified uh, camp buildings and some of the glamping on the beach, that's the, the nice tents and stuff like that. So it's in, it's in the process, it's being, it's being looked at right now, still some other steps to go through before we're there. But happy to, happy to participate in uh, identifying all the stakeholders that would be contacted and required to, be, to discuss concerns and mitigation issues with. Let's see, coming down, oh, Z Zerang, an extra picture they got stuck in there. First time I ever met Z was actually at one of the Restorer Retreat meetings. Uh, and uh, the, another thing we do is promote coastal advocacy by engaging young, the stewards of tomorrow, go to the elementary school just last week for Coastal Wetlands Day. One of my uh, volunteer assistants, Ms. Polly Glover, I was at the special session in Baton Rouge, so she went to the La Rose Elementary and engaged and did activities with the kids. Uh, there's a high school level pro program that uh, Fletcher and Chevron had sponsored in the past that we're gonna try to do again to engage uh, high school students looking for a career. Uh, I believe that's Archie, our parish president, Archie Chasson, talking to them at one of the previous events. Uh, and then of course, college level interns. I've been asked to, to, you know, people that are in college that are interested in coastal consulting, biology, all things related to, to our coast. Uh, trying to put them with, with various organizations, whether it's the Nickel State Forum or some of the consulting companies in Baton Rouge like Sigma that do work for CPRA. It's real good for them to get engaged and get a job early on. They have annual meetings. Uh, at one time they did what they call a candidate lunch and learn. So for people running for public office who are maybe not as familiar with uh, the needs of our coast and our coastal restoration, they had done some lunch and learns for those candidates in the past. And I'm trying to go forward. There we go. Uh, where I met Z for the first time was something called Conservation on Tap, where we discuss uh, the projects of the master plan over beer at a place like Spigots in Homer. And then the annual Restore Retreat Rendezvous, uh, just basically a gathering to, to speak to to various stakeholders and members about. Uh, also try to attend coastal conferences. I went to one, my first coastal conference, learned a lot about uh, you know, the beneficial use of dredge material and the process of relating to it. Also got a good idea of how uh, large scale our Louisiana projects are compared to other people that do coastal restoration in anywhere else in the country. I mean, they look at our projects as all gigantic, so, but it's part of our world and our life here. So. And also things like the Rugeru Fest, there I am at the booth uh,
talking to people, educating them on uh, coastal restoration and signing them up. And also offshore wind conferences as well. <laughs> Sounds like it's not connected, but you'd be surprised. Uh, the people that supplied one of those large grants, the National Wildlife Federation, actually encouraged me to continue to going to offshore wind conferences. And uh, in some of the meetings that I've had with some of the recent developers that are interested in doing things possibly in the, the Gulf of Mexico, they all recognize the sensitivity of our wetlands and they all say that they want to engage local consulting, siting and permitting companies. Uh, so that's, that's good, you know, might, might actually get some, uh, some areas cleaned up around our state, some pipelines whenever they, if they try to put in some uh, cable right of ways. One of the ad hoc meetings was uh, I got a call to visit with the Vice President of Brittany in France who was here at the CPRE office to, uh, to talk about coastal restoration efforts. So that was uh, pretty, pretty encouraging and engaging. So what can the, the, the people do down here? Well, volunteer for beach cleanups, marsh plantings, the derelict uh, crab trap rodeos to clean up in the marsh any sort of other coastal activities. Make sure that your local, state, and federal representatives are aware that you know, protecting the coast uh, is a priority for you, your family, your community, and of course support Restore Retreat and organizations <laughs> like us. And that's about all I got. I don't know why I jumped over my contact. I'm on, I try to post uh, activities that I do on the website, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And that's it, Mr. Director and Mr. President. All right. Well, thank you much. Mr. I appreciate the appreciate opportunity it. to both be a state representative and work to uh, advocate for uh, coastal restoration projects, uh, which is so important to our levy system. That's all so important to us. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Joe. Mr. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we move on to public comment, I just want to recognize we have uh, Mr. Fred Trowbridge is here from Congressman Scalise's office. I want to thank him for, for being here. All right. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shasso. Next, we're coming on public comment. Uh, any public comments, all will be held to under three minutes. We have a couple of people that want to talk. Mr. Lede, more than welcome. Come and talk. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Chet, commissioners, I want to thank you for allowing me a moment here. Uh, my name is Reggie Lede. I'm running for the Great Lake Foodsport Commission CE. I'm a life, lifetime member, a lifelong member of the 10th Ward, I'm 49 years old. I'm married to Holly Stevens Lede. I have two beautiful children, Braden and Evelyn Lede. I'm the son of the late Jimmy Lede. I'm married to Judy Lede. I'm the son of the late Audrey Ducey Luke, who was married to the late Roy Luke. So I'm here today to just kind of tell you a little bit about myself, about my grandparents. That's the late Ebden and Azima Lede, and also the late Freddie and Lena Ducey. As a kid growing up, <clears throat> uh, my three older brothers and my father were all in all and all in gas industry. I knew where I wanted to be, and I was following in their footsteps. So at the age of 18, I approached my father and I asked him if I can go to work. And he, he commented, oh, you're ready to go into the real world. Uh, at that time, he was managing a drilling company. So he did get me that job. He stuck me on a helicopter. I flew about 60 miles offshore. I landed out there, and I got out that helicopter, and I look up, and I see this massive drilling rig. And I'm thinking, well, Reggie, you can do one of two things right now. You can tuck your tail and run, or you can put your hard hat on and go to work make your family proud. I did just that. I put that hard hat on and I went to work. With that being said, I've been managing a shore base facility in Port Fouchon for the last 11 years. So from that kid in the drill, on the drilling rigs at 18 years old, I've managed to work my way up to become a, a general manager of a facility in Port Fouchon. I've seen our port grow tremendously over the last 31 years of my career in the oil and gas industry. <clears throat> there are numerous planned and even new projects coming to the port that's going to create jobs for generations to come. And I'm asking you to allow me 
to be an integral part of its continued growth and success. I'll close with this. I'm a proven leader that my track record demonstrates leadership and also I'm focused on the future of the 10th Ward. So I humbly ask you for your support, my 10th Ward constituents, for your vote on March 25th with early election being March 11th to the 18th. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Mr. Legate. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Mr. Salva. Good morning. Thank you all for having me. Uh, my name is Dean Savoy. I'm from La Rose, Louisiana. My mother and father is Ernest and Dolores Savoy La Rose. Uh, they recently passed. Uh, I am a candidate for CD for Great LaFouche Port Commission. I started my law enforcement career in 1983. I finished up with, uh, as a major with the LaFouche Parish Sheriff's Office managing the Galliano Substation and Operational Support Services. Uh, I managed 60 people. Uh, I have worked the streets of the 10th Ward and in the entire parish. I've seen the good, the good and the bad of this parish, but there's more good than bad, thank God. Uh, I will be honest. I will tell, always tell the truth to y'all, and I'm willing to work every commission that's sitting here. I, I also work the port. Uh, I've seen the oil and gas in, industry in, in their heyday. You know, I was there yesterday, and uh, I didn't see too many booms turning on these cranes. So hopefully we could uh, get more jobs, you know, for the people. Uh, with the uh, deep deepening of the channel, I think we need to, to, to diversify the port more. You know, uh, um, it's my understanding that uh, that port's not supposed to compete against each other. I learned that recently. But why are they allowing other uh, parishes to establish ports for oil and gas. You know, why not, you know, uh, New Orleans uh, seems to be always protected that nobody can compete with freight or containers coming in. I think we need to diversify more to get more jobs for the people. Also, if, if elected, I'd like to see this board push more out federal coalition and state to do more with the insurance industry. I understand they just passed a bill for $45 million, but if we don't have a workforce here in the 10th Ward, we don't have a port. We must take care of them. We must take care of our people. But with, with that said, I'm willing to work with, with the, if elected, willing to work on all the commissions. And uh, hopefully on March 25th, I'm successful in my campaign. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Savoy. All right, any other public comments? So Lorraine, you have three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes, everybody has three minutes public comments. Thank you, congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Uh, on March 25th, besides the Port Commission election, there will be three parish proposals coming up. Road sales tax two, which is a half cent sales tax from the power line south. Road sales tax A, which is a one cent tax from the power lines north. What they're trying to do, what they want to do, and this has been in existence for 25 years. This tax was voted on by the public on 2007 half cent, roads, bridges, and drainage, and uh, it's a one cent road, bridges, and drainage of the road. So you got five years left on the proposal. But what they want to do is they want to come in and cut it and put it all together. They want to make this parish wide, which is ridiculous. 84% of the people said yes, 16% of the people said no. So if you do this, you're actually doing a recall to the people that voted for this. Just leave it alone, let it finish its time, and then move on in 227. Now they want to take the three drainage districts, one, five, and six. Five is on fire. These guys are very upset. I met with them. They don't want it to happen. They want to take care of their own, just like they want to take care of their own from the, from the 308. Uh, hi, uh, I'm trying to think. The, Anyway, up in the northern part of Thibodeau on the east side, they want to be left alone. Just like they want to be left alone, I think we should be left alone on the road sales tax too. People voted for that, let it finish. And then the big one is we pay seven tenths on the garbage. So what they want to do is they want to take 
four tenths out of the seven tenths and give it to the school board and put $16 a month on your water bill. Gentlemen, I don't know if you remember this, but in the early 80s, we had that on the water bill. People didn't want that. We took it off. We put a one cent tax. 37 years ago, we passed a one cent sales tax. So you know what? Leave it alone. It's forever. Perpetuous. It's forever. Just leave it. If you take the four tenths off and give it to the school board, you ain't going to have enough money to pay. You go up, so they want to pass a $16 service charge. That's going to kill Golden Meadow and Lockport. There's not one water bill in Golden Meadow and Lockport that's less than $20. Think about the elderly people for a change. I can afford it. Most of you guys could probably afford it, but there's a lot of people out there on fixed income that can't afford it. It's just a little bit too much. You know, everybody wants to help the school teachers. I'm one of them that wants to help the school teachers, but don't go take your garbage money. Who's gonna pick up your garbage? I don't think the people want garbage once a week. Look at all the problems they're having in New Orleans. I'm done? Yes, sir. Thank you very much and congratulations, right, Tom. And I want to congratulate the two guys that are running for the seat on March 25th. And go out and vote on March 25th and don't forget those three proposals. All right. Thank you. And any other public comment? Okay. We're moving on. Next we have the Executive Committee. Members are Chuck E. Sherman, Chairman, Rodney J. Gisclair, Larry Griffin, and Jimmy LaFont. First, we have consider approving the agreement to purchase and sell with Coyote Land LLC covering roughly 857 acres of property in and around the Fouchon. All right, gentlemen, this is a big deal. Um, and it, it says agreement to purchase and sell. What that means, it's, a, it's basically a purchase agreement. We are agreeing to purchase uh, that property. They are agreeing to sell that property. That's why it's called purchase and sell. So this is all of Coyote's property in and around the port area with the exception of what True. Mr. Ogeron just mentioned about the, the donation. They're going to donate that land on the southern end uh, to, um, for, to, to make a state park, the Cayouette um, Fouchon State Park. So you can see in red um, everything within the, the port footprint that we're going to be purchasing. The road right away on the south side is now going to be owned by the Port Commission and then all of those other sections highlighted in red will be all under ownership of the port with this, with this purchase agreement. Um, the, the, the price of, of land purchase is $36,722,753.23. And then this agreement also says that we're going to get rid of all the outstanding obligations, the agreements and different things that we've had with them. Uh, for $2,277,246.77 for a total price of $39 million even. Uh, recommendation is to approve this um, purchase agreement. We'll also have, um, we'll do a 5% down payment. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll be approved later of $1.9 um, million. All right. Need a motion. Move. Move, move by. Second. Moved by uh, John Melisson, second by Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. I just got one thing to say about this. This is something that's a big, big deal for this community. This is not something just for us. We'll never see it. But for our children, there will be no more negotiation with the leasees. For the rest of their life, it's finished with because it don't look like it, but another 30 years, they would have had to do another lease for the port. Now there's no more leases <coughs> that have to be negotiated. The property belongs to the people of the tent ward now. We have, don't have to worry about any more legal negotiations. We, that was a lot of money. We don't have to worry about the mitigation of where we had to put it by them. It's just a big economic impact for this community that been working on for years and hoping for this. It's 22 years now and I've been hoping to this, and this is actually one of our biggest things that we have in port history. So I want to commend the staff, the employees, everyone for doing this and taking part in working on this because it was a long time coming and y'all did a great job. This commission and the people of the tent ward, y'all got something that never thought we'd get from up the bayou, but now the people of the tent ward, we own it. Thank you. 
And Mr. President, that's the Caillou at Land Company. That's the Caillou at Land Company. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, I'm going to cut you off because you're done in public comment, and this part is over with the public comment. But if you have any problems with this, you need to contact your family. Yes, we have a briefing. Uh, right, but uh, yeah, I have to cut you off. You had the chance in public comment. And uh, if any problems you have with this, you need to contact your family, and y'all need to go from there. As far as our part, we're finished. And you're more than welcome to come on another time. You're more than welcome to come on another time. But we're out of our uh, Yeah, public you're session. out of public comment. You can come on another time with public comment. Yeah, All and right. I mean, if, you have, if there's any problem, honestly, you really need to contact your family. We just took care of our part and our people yeah, of the tent war. We have no... Yeah, yes, right. sir. So Thank if you, you want to come back another time on a public comment, you're more than welcome. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Anyone else got anything to say? All right, moving on. Consider adopting a resolution requesting approval from the Attorney General to hire a title attorney. Okay, as part of this uh, purchase and sale agreement, now that that has been passed, uh, with that we have to do title work. So we will, um, this is a, re a resolution that requests the Attorney General to approve <coughs> us to hire um, a, a title a attorney. All right, need a motion. Moved by Mr. Chris Colley, second by Mr. Ted Salwa. Any discussions? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the request from Chad Boudreaux Enterprises to extend lease site GLF 408. Okay, uh, Chad Boudreaux Enterprises has been leasing this property for a number of years, and they are requesting to extend that lease by five years. Recommendation to approve. Okay, I need a motion. Move Moved by Jim Lafon. Second by Mr. Mike Collier. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the right of first refusal request with Crowley Wind Services on site GLF 632. All right, we've been having discussions with Crowley Wind Services for uh, many, many months now, almost a year, uh, I believe. Uh, and uh, we've um, come to uh, the point of doing a right of first refusal with them for a little over 2,200 linear feet of waterfront in Slip C, and about uh, 40 acres associated with that. Recommendation to approve. All right, need a motion. Moved by Mr. Tom P. Second by Mr. John Mellison. Any discussion? Any? I just, I just like to add that this is, to my knowledge, uh, the first um, review of property in the Gulf of Mexico for a purpose-built offshore wind facility. I think that's a big deal. As we're moving forward into the future, uh, when we talk about, you know, we know all about offshore energy. This is going to be an addition 
to our capability of servicing offshore energy for our nation into the future. All right. Any more discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Next, approve considering the revised disaster recovery business continue policy. All right. So um, this is about our um, IT uh, work and data backups and all of those things. It's, it's adding into our policy what we're actually doing today. So recommendation to approve. Right. Need a motion. Move. Move by Mr. Mike Colley, second by Jim Lafon. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Next, consider approving the revised equal opportunity and harassment policy. Okay, so um, as part of the code for uh, civil rights that um, the, we received funding from FEMA and other groups within the Department of Homeland Security. They're requesting to us to, to add this into our policy so that we can receive those funds. A recommendation to approve these additions. All right, need a motion. Moved by Larry Griffin, second by Mr. Ted Sawa. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, consider approving the revised purchasing and disbursement policy. Okay, as part of the agreed upon procedures, um, all the electronic disbursements uh, need to be approved by myself. You guys approve them when we do our, our financials and approve those payments. Um, we're just going to add it to the Docstar process as I approve all other invoices and I'm approving um, these electronic disbursements. We currently have two of those all that right. we do on a monthly basis. We need a motion. Move by Mr. Tom Pete, second by Jim Lafon. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the revised purchasing and disbursement oh, policy. No, we, we did just that one. one. Yep. Okay. Consider approving the bid to purchase a port truck. Okay, so we, we uh, advertised for bid and took bids on August 25th of 2022 for a port vehicle. The winning bid was with uh, for a Ford pickup truck, uh, F-250. Um, Ford cannot produce that vehicle for us. We've been told we have it, that in writing. We went to the next um, bidder, uh, A.J. Doman Chrysler, for a Dodge Ram, same equivalent vehicle. That uh, The vehicle that they bid was a particular vehicle. They have sold it. So the next one is Southland Dodge Chrysler Jeep, who says they can deliver the 2023 Ram 2500 crew cab 4x4 um, within 120 to 150 days for $52,605. Recommendation to approve as has been a challenge to get vehicles these days. All right, need a motion. Moved by Mr. John Mellison, seconded by Mr. Chris Colley. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Next we have we're getting out executive committee going to permits and waterways. Committee, first we have review the permits and from the Foosh Parish government and GLPC. First we have the Foosh Parish government proposed construction of approximately 88,650 feet of linear feet of earthen terrace and open water ponded area. Then we have the Greater Lafourche Port Commission. The applicant has requested the Department of Army to authorization to clear, grade, excavate, and deposit fill and dredge material to construct and maintain a slip on Fusha Island for development of the project. And the members on there were Rodney Jisco, Chairman, Ted Sawa, Tom Pete, and Chucky Sherry. Next, we have Construction and Development Committee. The members are Chris Colley, Chairman, Mike Colley, Jim Lafon, and Chucky Sherry. Mr. Colley. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. President. Item one, we have consider approving change order number one with LMB services for the obstruction removal project. And that's a deduct of $7,200. Recommendation is to approve. All right, recommendation to approve. All right, need a motion. Move by Mr. Chris Colley, second by Mike Colley. Any discussion? <coughs> Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passed. Item two, consider accepting the clear lien certificate from Grand Isle Shipyard for the public boat launch bathhouse project. Now we discussed that earlier. You're gonna approve this. If you approve this, it would be pending the receipt from, uh, of the clear lien certificate 
from the clerk's office. Recommendation to approve. Move. Move by my colleague, second by Mr. Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion pass. Item three, consider approving the lowest responsive bid for demolition of PHI office. All right, the lowest responsive bid was Lowland Construction Company Incorporated for $36,563. Recommendation to approve. All right, need a motion. So move, move. Moved by Ted Sawat, second by Tom P. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Item four, consider approving change orders number one and two from Tosh for the operations center and warehouse. We went through those Monday night and again just a little bit earlier. Recommendation to approve. Yeah, I need a motion. Moved by Jim Lafon, second by John Mellison. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> motion pass. Item five, consider approving change orders number one, two, and three from Tidewater Dock for the boat lift and wharf project. We went through those on Monday evening as well at the committee meetings as well as just a little bit earlier in the report, recommendation to approve. All right, need a motion. Move. Moved by Chris Colley, second by Jamie Lafon. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion pass. Item six, consider approving change order number one from Freetown Builders for the airport terminal. We went through those earlier as well. Recommendation to approve. Okay, I got a motion by Mr. Chris Colley. I got a second by Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Mr. President, this concludes the Construction and Development Committee report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Colley. Next, we're going to the Finance Committee. Members are John Mellison, Jr., Chairman, Larry Griffin, Chris Colley, and Chucky Sheridan. Mr. Mellison, your turn. All right, Mr. President, we've been uh, spending a long agenda. I'm going to try to fly through these. Item one, 5% deposit on the land purchase agreement with the Cayuette Land Company, $1,950,000 even. Item 1A, Tidewater Dock Incorporated, $811,286.54, and that's for Hurricane Ida restoration damages in the port. Item 2, APC Construction LLC, $338,133.19, and that's for Slip C Bulkhead Part 2. Did I say item three, Larry? Not yet. Not yet? All right. Item three, Piciola Construction Incorporated, 275880 <laughs> even. That's Hurricane Ida repairs to the administration building. Item four, Onshore Construction Company, LLC, $228,053.46. And that's for the Flotation Canal Pavilion Project. Item five, GIS Engineering, 109000 $944.58, that's for slip, deep bulkhead, and multiple other projects. Item six, Angelette Design, LLC, $95,245.05, that's for the Fouchon Island Permit Development and also other multiple items. Item seven, Sea Level Construction Incorporated, $84,895.88, Airport Connector Road and Bridge Project, Item 8, Grand Isle Shipyard, $50,443.30. That's repairs to the bathhouse at the boat launch, along with airport FBO cost. Item 9, PCO and Associates, $35,342.32. That's for the Airport <coughs> Connector Road and other multiple projects. Item 10, Gee Asphalt Systems Incorporated, $39,964.83. That's for seal coat and pavement marking project at the airport. Item 11, Black Hawk Datacom, $30,613.82. Equipment to rewire the administration <laughs> building. Item 12, Dell, $29,249.30. And that's for VMS services. Item 13, CSRS, Disaster Recovery Management, LLC, $29,256.25. And that's for disaster grant 
Management Consultant for Hurricane <coughs> Ida. Item 14, Plaisance Dragline and Dredging, $25,715.48. And that's for dredging at the Nervy Collins Marina. Item 15, LMB Services LLC, $25,189.83. And that's for obstruction removal at the airport. Bringing us, along with our other expenditures, to a grand total of five million. $151,258.40. And if Mr. Griffin says it's okay, I'd like to make a motion we approve these. Number 13, you said 29,026. 29, then I would like to redact that and say $26,256.25. You got it, sir. Pre Mr. President, motion to approve. All right, so I got a motion by you. I'll get one. I got the second by Mr. Griffin since he approved it. Anybody else got any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion passed. Next, as discu discussed on Monday night committee meetings, in your folders we need to approve the 2023 unaudited financial statements. And Mr. President, I'd like to make for, a motion. For January. The for January, January 23. January 2023. <clears throat> Financial statements, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we approve these. All right, I got a motion by Mr. John Mellison, second by Mr. Chris Colley. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. The faster I seem to go, the worse it seems to get, Mr. President. I know. Item three, consider approving the audit engagement letter agreement with Laporte and Lewis and Ellis, as discussed on Monday night, and I'd like to make a motion that we approve this. All right, I got a motion by second. Mr. Uh, John Nelson, second by Mr. Tom P. Any discussion? Any public comment? All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. And last, we have out-of-state travel and training request for February. We have Director of Grants and Communications, Thad Angelos, along with Director of Operations, David Bro and Special Counsel for Offshore Wind, Luling Petrie, attending the 2023 International Offshore Wind Partnering Forum in Baltimore, Maryland, March 27th through the 31st. Next, we have Executive Director Chet Chasson attending the AAPA Legislative Summit in Washington, D.C., March 27th through the 28th. Next, we have Director Chasson again attending the National Ocean Industries Association Annual Meeting, Washington, D.C., April 25th through the 28th. Next, we have Director of IT, John Crochet, along with Homes Homeland Security Specialist Scott Bynum, attending the Port of the Future Conference in Houston, Texas, April 3rd through the 7th. And last, we have Harbor Police Chief Mike Kendler attending the AAPA Security Committee Meeting in Mobile, Alabama, March 1st through the 3rd. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we accept these out-of-state travel and training requests. All right, I got a motion by John Mellison. I got a second by Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Mr. President, this concludes the Finance Committee report. All right, thank you, Mr. Mellison. We have any other business? Any public comment? All right. I move that we adjourn, Mr. I got a motion by Mr. Jim Lafon. I got a second by Mr. Tom P. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. All right, I'd like to tell everyone thank you for coming. Mardi Gras is coming around. Everyone be safe with Mardi Gras. You're drinking and driving and and have your kids enjoy. Remember, this is for kids from Mardi Gras. Meetings adjourned.